For most of the history of the World Championship, Formula One has been dominated by car manufacturers. Whether as engine suppliers partnering with teams or full works operations, it's often the automotive companies who have the resources and the know-how to prevail. But that doesn't mean that every ambitious manufacturer entry is automatically a success. Over the past seven decades, there have been plenty of car makers who didn't achieve the victories that they expected. Here are the 10 biggest manufacturer failures in F1 history. Let us know if you agree with our choices, and don't forget to subscribe for more from the race. Fresh from its Le Mans success in 1991 and 92, Peugeot considered entering Formula One as a full works operation before becoming McLaren's engine partner in 1994. Its first season yielded eight podium finishes, but Anglo-French relations were poor, and the engine was neither powerful enough nor reliable enough for team boss Ron Dennis. This led to the partnership coming to an end after just one season, with Peugeot then teaming up with the emerging Jordan team. In three years with Jordan, the Peugeot engine improved dramatically and emerged as a threat for race wins in 1997 when it was reckoned to be one of the most powerful engines in F1. But commercial and political factors led to it linking up with Alain Prost's team in 1998. The Prost-Peugeot alliance was a disaster, with just five points finishes in three seasons and the only real achievement a fortuitous second place for Jarno Trulli at the Nürburgring in 1999. With the relationship increasingly fractious, Peugeot pulled out of F1 at the end of 2000. Although its engine lived on in F1 after being sold to Asia Tech, powering Arrows and then Minardi. Lancia had the ambition, it had the superstar driver in Alberto Ascari, it had the ace designer in Vittorio Jano, and even the car to thrive in Formula One. But it didn't have the money. The Lancia D50 didn't make its debut until the final race of the 1954 season, but it made its mark with Ascari taking pole position and retiring from the lead with a clutch problem. Ascari then won two early season non-championship races in 1955, the Valentino and Naples Grand Prix, and was leading the Monaco Grand Prix when he lost it under braking and pitched himself into the harbour. He survived, but was killed four days later testing a Ferrari Sport 750S sports car at Monza. The devastating loss of Ascari is often blamed for Lancia quitting F1, but really it was financial problems. The company was sold, there was no more cash for racing, and the design and spares were sold on to Fiat, which passed them on to Ferrari. Juan Manuel Fangio won the 1956 World Championship in what was now called the Lancia Ferrari D50 for Scuderia Ferrari. Yamaha is best known for its success in motorcycle racing, but from 1989 to 1997, it tried to crack Formula One as an engine supplier. But in spells with Zack Speed, Brabham, Jordan, Tyrrell and Arrows, it managed just two podium finishes in 116 races. Yamaha's first foray with a struggling Zack Speed team in 1989 was a disaster, only qualifying twice using an evolution of its Cosworth V8-based F3000 engine. It returned after a year out with a new V12 engine powering Brabham, picking up its first points finish with Mark Blundell 6th in the Belgian Grand Prix. Jordan used the engine, which the race's technical expert Gary Anderson calls a boat anchor, with little success the following year, but things started to look up when Yamaha teamed up with British engine builder John Judd. They created a new V10, based on the Judd that previously raced in F1, but after a pointless first year with Tyrrell in 1993, Blundell finished third in the Spanish Grand Prix a year later. After four seasons with Tyrrell, Yamaha teamed up with Arrows for its ambitious 1997 campaign with Damon Hill, famously coming close to winning the Hungarian Grand Prix before a hydraulics problem dropped it to second. Yamaha quit F1 ahead of the 1998 season after falling out with Arrows. Italian manufacturer Lamborghini's stint in Formula One from 1989 to 1993 yielded just one podium finish, Aguri Suzuki's third place for La Russe in the 1990 Japanese Grand Prix. But it also featured a year fielding a pseudo works team and a dalliance with McLaren, where it gained the approval of Ayrton Senna before sliding quietly out of F1. Chrysler owned Lamborghini, supplied its V12 engine to the French La Russe operation for free in 1989 and 90, adding a second supply for Lotus in its second year. In the background, it worked on a car to supply to the Mexican owned Glass team that intended to join F1 in 1991. 
When the funding for that project vanished, the nascent team moved to Modena with an injection of cash from Lamborghini. The renamed Modena team, headed by legendary former Ferrari engineer Mauro Fuggieri, made its debut in 1991 and was often referred to as Lamborghini or Lambo, even though the Italian manufacturer kept its distance. And understandably so, given this pseudo works team struggled to qualify and never bettered Nicola Larini's seventh place in the Phoenix season opener. Its supply deal with Ligier that year also yielded little success. As the Modena team floundered and eventually closed, Lamborghini focused its efforts on the engine, supplying Minardi in 92, then LaRousse in 93 with a new V12 design. Having tested the McLaren Lamborghini, which was 60 bhp more powerful and lighter than the Ford he was using that year, Senna pushed to run it in the final three races of the 93 season. But McLaren signed up with Peugeot for 94 instead, amid doubts about Chrysler's commitment to F1. The Lamborghini engine was never seen again in F1. Despite the success of its engine, Ford didn't have its own team on the F1 grid until 2000, taking over the race-winning Stewart operation and rebranding it as Jaguar. The idea was to conquer F1 with the evocative brand as the British Ferrari, but far from achieving the World Championship success thought possible in the first year, it turned out to be a failure. The story of Jaguar in F1 is one of corporate interference, a revolving door management strategy, with Eddie Irvin's third places at Monaco in 2001, and Monza, a year later, the only high points. In 2003 and 2004, the results did improve, with Mark Webber turning in some eye-catching performances, but Jaguar still never finished higher than seventh in the Constructors' Championship. Budgets were cut as Ford lost interest, and after briefly considering rebranding the team as a Ford Works team to justify the spend, it decided to pull out. Just to underline Jaguar's failure, the team was acquired by Red Bull ahead of the 2005 season. It went on to emerge as a top team in 2009 and won four double world championships from 2010 to 2013. It remains an F1 powerhouse to this day. Alfa Romeo won the first two world championships with the pre-war Alfetta in 1950 and 1951 before pulling out of Formula One. It returned as a constructor in 1979, building on the F1 engine program run by Alfa Romeo's Auto Delta Competitions Department. Headed by Carlo Chitti, the project had grand ambitions, but its six years on the grid yielded little success. After a tow in the water in 1979, its first full season was a tragic one, with Pachit de Paille killed in a crash at Hockenheim in 1980. The recruitment of Mario Andretti for 1981 didn't help, although Bruno Giacomelli did take a third place at Las Vegas. Relations between Kiti and designer Gérard Ducarouge, who had joined from Ligier for 1981, became strained despite some promising performances in 82 with Andrea de Cesaris taking pole position at Long Beach, only to lose the lead in the race to Nicky Lauda because he was using his hand to gesticulate at a back marker rather than changing gear. With Alfa Romeo's commitment wavering, an injection of Marlborough money for 1983 came with a proviso that the team was restructured, becoming a joint effort between Auto Delta and the Euro racing outfit. Duke Rouge, rightly or wrongly, was axed after the 1983 French Grand Prix when the car's fire extinguishers were revealed to be running empty to reduce weight, and the struggles just got worse. With Keaty marginalised, Alfa Romeo struggled on to the end of 1985 before the plug was pulled after a pointless season. But its engine did live on for another three years with a seller, for its final season in 88, badged as an Acela engine. When the Aston Martin name joins Formula One in 2020 as the new identity for Racing Point, it will actually be the second time the brand has had cars on the grid. The little-remembered Aston Martin Grand Prix project of 1959 and 60 is forgotten for a very good reason. It achieved nothing. With Aston Martin's primary focus on sports car racing, its DBR4 Grand Prix car first ran in 1957 but didn't make its debut until the non-championship international trophy at Silverstone two years later. Roy Salvadori finished second, but that was the sole high point for a car that was already obsolete thanks to the rear-engined revolution. Engine problems blighted its World Championship debut in the 1959 Dutch Grand Prix, but Salvadori finished sixth at the British Grand Prix, then both cars made the finish in Portugal, with Salvadori sixth and Carroll Shelby eighth. Its four World Championship outings didn't yield a single point. The evolutionary Aston Martin DBR5 appeared briefly the following year, but the project was canned after Maurice Trantignon finished 11th in the British Grand Prix.
Porsche enjoyed success as a works team and later as builder of the tag badge turbo engines that powered McLaren to World Championship success in the mid-1980s, but its most recent F1 foray was a disastrous alliance with the footwork team that lasted just six races in 1991. Team owner Wataru Ohashi had just bought Arrows and renamed it after the Footwork Express Logistics Company, and he stumped up the cash to pay for what was intended to be a four-year Porsche deal. But the V12 Porsche 3512 engine, which was rooted in the technology of the old V6 Turbo, was overweight and underpowered, falling far short of the performance that Porsche had a contractual obligation to deliver. A footwork Porsche never made the chequered flag, with its biggest impact coming in practice at Monaco when Alex Caffey crashed at the swimming pool and the engine parted company from the chassis. This arrangement soon became permanent, with footwork avoiding losing money thanks to Porsche failing to deliver on its agreed engineering targets. Subaru is famous in motorsport for its rallying success, but it's often forgotten that the Japanese manufacturer also had a crack at Formula One. After an initial attempt to team up with Minardi fell through, Subaru bought 51% of the Minnow Coloni team, which had been struggling even to qualify for races, ahead of the 1990 season and gave it work status. Equipped with the heavy, unreliable and gutless flat 12 Subaru engine designed by Carlo Kitties Matori Moderni, Coloni started the season with the engine shoehorned into a B-spec of its 1989 chassis. With just a brief shakedown at Firebird Speedway, ahead of the season opening United States Grand Prix at Phoenix, the car proved woefully uncompetitive, although work was progressing on a new V12 engine that was intended to be introduced mid-season. Bertrand Gachot failed to pre-qualify its sole entry for the first eight races of 1990, before Subaru parent company Fuji Heavy Industry announced enough was enough and pulled out, citing different views, before that new engine could ever be introduced. Enzo Coloni regained full control of the team, which struggled on to the end of 1991. From 2002 to 2009, Toyota spent a vast sum of money, but despite taking three pole positions and 13 podium finishes in 139 races, it never won a Grand Prix. The scale of its failure given its level of investment and the expectations for what was becoming the biggest car manufacturer in the world earns Toyota its number one ranking. Toyota never entirely embraced the culture required to succeed in F1. It wanted to thrive by applying the Toyota way, a corporate philosophy well-tuned to its automotive core, but not the fast-moving F1 world. Toyota underestimated F1 from the start, in terms of its complexity, the rapidly growing aerodynamic detail of the cars, and the need for very strong technical leadership. Too often, drivers were blamed for its shortcomings, while corporate decisions, such as forcing a switch from Michelin to Bridgestone rubber against the wishes of the team in 2006, interrupted the momentum it did build. Toyota came close to winning but never did, perhaps most famously failing after a bad tyre choice cost it after running first and second in the 2009 Bahrain Grand Prix. But perhaps Spa 2009 was the bigger opportunity missed, with Jarno Trilli fastest fuel corrected in qualifying but suffering an electrical problem that slowed his start, then getting front wing damage in turn one. Toyota walked away at the end of 2009, a victim of the global economic crisis and its own failure. Have we missed anyone? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.